Hey there! Welcome to a very special episode of Hobie on YouTube. It's special because I have a very amazing vintage Swiss Army knife to share. Dave Arnold, the author of A Collector's Guide to Vintage Winger Knives, has allowed me to feature three very rare, beautiful, and interesting knives from his collection and featured in his book on my channel. So first of all, I want to thank Dave for sending me these knives, uh, for taking the time and the expense and the risk to do that. Thank you, Dave. Now, he didn't ask me to do this next part, but I also want to encourage you to go buy a copy of his book, which is really the seminal reference work on vintage winger knives. I will do three separate videos, one on each knife Dave's provided me, and I'm going to begin with a winger made between 1908 in 1918, which we affectionately refer to as the Black Beauty. And with these beautiful black fiber scales and red first generation shield, I think you can see why. You know, Black Beauty is also a nickname given to more modern Victorinox Alox knives with black scales and red printed shields. But I'll argue that this is the original Black Beauty Swiss Army knife. The first thing I'd like to mention about this knife is that it was a part of the late Stefan Schober's collection. Stefan was a good friend of Dave's and a friend of mine as well. So the knife holds a very special place with us. It was Stefan's favorite knife, and I know now that it's Dave's favorite and most valued knife. So forgive me if my hands tremble a little bit while doing this video, but guys, I've handled a lot of vintage Swiss Army knives, but I've never held one like this in my hands before. Uh, first, as you can see, it's stunningly different in its appearance, but it's really rare too. Um, first of all, the black fiber scales are rare, but they're made even rarer by this red shield inlay. That's Winger's first generation shield. And not all wingers with a black fiber scale, if you can find any, have that shield. So it might have been optional at the time, uh, or certainly a premium feature. Dave's only aware of 10 of these knives with black fiber scales and the red first generation shield. Um, a Swiss collector holds four of them. Dave has three of them. And of all of them known, only two are four-layer knives, as this one is. As I mentioned, this knife dates somewhere between 1908, based on the tank stamp, which we'll look at in a minute, to 1918, because it does have a solid screwdriver, and Winger introduced the cap lifter in its screwdriver in 1918, a few years before Victorinox did. Uh, this knife is in excellent condition, it was when Stefan found it, uh, but he did take it to an expert cutler that he used to work with to have the blades and some of the tools polished and sharpened. It has aluminum liners, which is unusual for the time. Uh, aluminum was a rarely used premium metal back then. It was considered almost precious, but certainly uh, cutting edge. You can see that these black fiber scales are very gradually rounded. Uh, the edges are very gradually curved. It does have bird's eye rivets. That's a rivet with a washer around it embedded into the scale. It gives the joint more strength. Here it has a very decorative nickel silver bail. Again, it's four layers. One thing that makes this knife unusual is that it has a flush solid double spring that carries both the scissors and the saw we'll look at here shortly. That was a feature you saw on early Swiss Army knives um, that they later dropped. The back tools are a four-turn fluted or grooved corkscrew. It's still very sharp at the tip. Here are those aluminum liners. 
And the action on this knife is excellent. Everything snaps open and closed. Nothing is loose. All the tools are complete. Nothing is chipped, shortened. Uh, but the action is just really good. It's, it's firm, but it's light enough. Nothing is a nail breaker. Here is the European three-sided awl. European style three-sided awl. It's just sharp as a pen. Over 100 years old. So let's go through the tools, and the first thing I want to show you is a very unusual tool here right in the front with a big cutout in the scale and a generous nail divot to get it open. You may not have seen one of these before, but this is called a gimlet. And it's an early woodworking tool that was used to uh, bore holes, start screws, and drill holes in wood. So you can see here you could... Uh, get a screw started or go ahead and just get on down in there and use it as a drill bit. This is a tool that uh, Dave has only seen on wingers that are these red shield black fiber black beauties if you will and uh, it only seems to appear on the four layer and three layer models but not the two layer models. It's a tool that you sometimes see on other vintage knives, but it's really been sort of lost uh, in modern cutlery. Uh, today's, you know, multi-tools just won't feature this, this tool. Really very interesting. It's called a gimlet. Okay, I'm going to move through the rest of these tools the best I can peering over the camera here. It might be a little challenging. But uh, here's the screwdriver, and again, it is solid, so this helps us date the knife because Winger didn't start putting uh, the cap lifter on their screwdrivers until 1918. Actually, they were very early in doing that, and uh, certainly beat Victorinox to the punch there. And then up next are the scissors. Now, the scissors have a very, very small nail nick up front here. A little bit tough to get. You can see how small that nail nick is in the upper blade, but that's how you open the scissors. And uh, here they are, very much like other vintage Wenger and Victorinox Swiss Army knife scissors. They've got the screw pivot and the single leaf spring here. Let me do something for you. I couldn't resist. And then next we have the saw, the nail nicks on the opposite side. Now both of those tools share the double wide back spring here, which is flush. And uh, there's the saw. Of course all of these tools and blades that I'm showing you are carbon steel. Uh, they had not introduced stainless steel on knives at least these winger knives yet. This saw is sharp as the day it was made. It's a double tooth saw. It does have a nail nick. And uh, I don't believe it's ever really been used. I'm going to turn it around and uh, we'll take the blades out. We'll start with the secondary blade which is a clip point pen blade. It's really rather long for a uh, Swiss Army knife secondary blade. As you can see, it's got a great polish on it, and that's my greasy fingerprint. And don't worry, I will wipe this knife down very carefully with oil before I put it up. Um, but as I mentioned, Stefan did have an expert cutler he worked with, and I believe he had these blades uh, sharpened because they're just as sharp as they can be and polished. Now, the small blade carries a tang stamp, and it's the same tang stamp that the main blade carries. We'll also look at it in a second. It's a very old tang stamp. Maybe Super Zoom can help us here. And it reads Wenger curved on the first line. And then the three faces, the mysterious three faces symbol. 
and then Delamont underneath in a straight line. Delamont being Delamont, Switzerland, the uh, French-speaking region of Switzerland, where Winger was located. And now let's look at the main blade. And uh, it's a large spear point blade, also expertly polished and sharpened. Both of these blades uh, are gently swedged. And let's take a look at this tank stamp. Maybe we can get a little better bead on those three faces. And uh, if you look carefully, maybe you can see them. Three faces, they're all peering out in different directions, kind of in a triangle. Very mysterious. No one really knows <laughs> what that's supposed to represent. Okay, this knife is one of Winger's early 93 millimeter models, but um, just out of curiosity, I'd like to measure it myself. So I've got my digital calipers here. Let's just check that out. Yep, 92.65, so right at 93. And it's about nineteen and a half or 20 millimeters wide. And then let's weigh it. This is in grams. No, that's in ounces, 3.9 ounces. one hundred and eleven grams okay one final observation about this knife um, this knife was made during the time in Winger's history when Theodore Winger had just bought taken control of Cutellery Swiss and at four layers this was the largest 93 millimeter knife that they made at the time so this was probably one of, if not the flagship model of Winger. So it really stands to reason that old Theodore Winger might have actually carried this knife, this model of knife, uh, just to promote his company and show off his knives. So it's an interesting thought. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this very special review of a four-layer Winger officer's knife from the early 1900s featuring black fiber scales, the first Winger shield, a Winger Delamont three faces tank stamp, and a gimlet tool. And remember, this is just the first of three videos on some very special rarities from Dave Arnold's collection and book. Uh, up next is another Winger, unlike anything you've ever seen, unless you bought Dave's book. Uh, and then I'm going to present a very unusual and unique Victorinox. So stay tuned for all of that, and thanks for watching.